Lopez versus Kitty. For 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing a black trunks and joining us all the way from Nakhonsi, Tamarat, Thailand. He weighed in at already 104 pounds. His record stands at 18 wins, two losses, with eight wins coming by way of knockout. And he is ranked number nine in the world by the WBC. Introducing tonight's challenger, Kiki Chai Preacher. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the red corners, the defending world champion, wearing white trunks with green and red trim, originally from Cuernavaca, Morelos, Mexico, now fighting out of Distrito Federal, Mexico City. He weighed in at the straw weight limit of 105 pounds. His outstanding record includes 41 wins, no losses, 31 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is making the unprecedented 16th defense of his title. Please welcome the undefeated WBC strawweight champion of the world, introducing Ricardo Finito Lopez. Once again, our referee in charge, Dr. James Jenkin, now to give instructions. Okay, you tell these gentlemen high trunks, low blow here, low blow here. Low blow, here, trunks high, here. Okay, obey my commands, let's go. Well, James Jenkins doesn't mince words as we get ready for the WBC Strawweight Championship. Although Lopez has never seen Preacher fight, he told us he knows he's strong, hits hard, saying all fighters from Thailand can take a punch. That is probably simply boxing diplomacy by Lopez. In reality, this apparently has the ingredients of a huge mismatch. Although given the general competition of the straw weights, almost every Lopez fight can be considered a mismatch. And it's so hard to check those records. Everybody, and they keep such crazy records. This guy's also a kick fighter more than he is a regular boxer. By the way, have you ever seen a boxer look younger than that? You wonder whether his mother knows what he's out to. Looks like he's a cut class to come here, as you said earlier. Well, very, very difficult to authenticate Preacher. The interpreter said that Preacher was going to come straight out, try and stand inside the crowd, Lopez. He certainly came out trying, but it doesn't look like he has any pop in his punches. Doesn't look like he could hurt Lopez even if he wanted to. Well, in our meeting with Preacher yesterday, he did not say one word, even in his native tongue. His translator did all the talking. Aside from the possible mismatch, we learned that Preacher didn't arrive here from Thailand until three days ago, 18-hour trip. That's just not enough time to acclimate on top of all the other problems against Lopez. And against the finest fighter in the world right now. Well, what, what's left is for the audience to watch a master boxer in action and see what happens. Maybe Preacher gets lucky, you never know. And not to mention the fact it's over 120 degrees. I think it's dropping now. The sun is coming down. It's a merciful 100 and some odd. Thank you. You're welcome. Al Roker. You no, know, Ferdy, my trainer, Tommy Park, says no one ever gets lucky. If he threw the punch, he meant to hit you. If you didn't block it, that's your problem. He, he, that's a good philosophy, Bob. Well, the translator said Preacher has seen Lopez fight on TV. That's it. And his strategy would be to attack from the outset, fight on the inside. That Preach is a good boxer. His best punch is straight right. That's not a knockdown. Well, he's certainly not scared of uh, Lopez. He's in there battling. He's gone right at him. Stop yeah, give the kid credit. Stop boxing. They say his last three fights were KOs, talking about Preacher in the black trunks. He's 18 and two, eight knockouts. He has been down, as Ferdy pointed out. He has been a kickboxer, 30 kickboxing fights, 22 and 8. He actually participates in what's called Muay Thai, which Stop is up. a no Quickly. holds fired, very rugged version of kickboxing. You, you would think that anybody who participates in Muay Thai has to be tough, has to be able to take punches, elbows, knees, etc. And the kid has uh, definitely has a fight face if you look at him, but he doesn't have any power with the right hand. Doesn't punch well like most kickboxers. They haven't been able to match the power. And Bobby, for being in that many tough things, his face is unmarked. I mean, has no marks on it at all. He's fighting on the inside, is Preacher. And of course, the always elusive Ricardo Lopez able to spin away. Preacher going a little bit with the elbows there, getting the cautioning from the referee, Jack Kent. 
He's a fine technician, is Lopez. He, he criticizes himself when he throws a blow the wrong way, and he's so precise in what he wants to do. He sees what he wants to do, he executes, and if he doesn't, he's, he's upset with himself. So he's something to watch. I mean, it's, it's a thinking fighter in action. You think I can get a tenner? Well, at least we're going to get past the first round. And we're going to go into the food corner, which houses Preacher and our translator, Samak Lowen Nitna. We'll call him Sam yes, for yes, short. Yes. He'll help us out. Nothing, nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happened yet. Put the body, body pan more. Yeah, just body, body pan more. Yeah, yeah, just body pan more, two, three times. They want more body punching from the corner of Hidhishai. Preacher Lopez is ready to roll into round two. If you watch Preacher's trainer, you almost didn't even need an interpreter. He was throwing body combinations and ripping uppercuts and hooks over the top. So he, he definitely wants him to be on the inside, not the tail end of Lopez's body. Universal bomb. language could have saved a lot of money on a translator. Yeah, but everybody was talking in that corner. I, I saw, I heard more voices. Man, that was a confusing corner. Lopez usually brings the whole package, brilliantly displayed his wares in his last fight. Doubling up with the left uppercut, Lopez. That was against Filipino Southpaw, a la Villamore. A surgical-like performance. He came off with fractured knuckles in both hands, ankle problems, which occurred in his previous fight with Andy Tavanis. Showing no signs of his problems since. He's a master of the uppercut. I mean, he really throws a beautiful uppercut. Which is a great weapon if you know how to throw it, and few boxers do. In his last fight, the uh, win over Villamore, he slipped the jab and unleashed a vicious left uppercut that put the opponent on his back. He's so calm and he never really gets on nerves. He just waits, he takes his time, he has tremendous patience, he's never in a hurry, he never lets anything shake him, and Lopez is just doing what he feels like doing when he feels like doing it. You see that little momentary defense, and he just stepped aside just enough to miss all those. He barely had to block it with his gloves. It's just beautiful the way he the balance of his legs and, and the way he moves. And with Lopez, every punch has a purpose, doesn't it? Yeah, he, it's like a, a scheme. That he's on. Even his combinations seem like in a moment he hatches a plan and throws three or four punches. See the uppercut he just threw as the guy came in? How many people see do that? He's certainly not a one-punch knockout artist. He's very consistent and systematic. Wears people down with punches like we just saw. The combination. Well, I'll tell you what, Preacher's chin just got chest to test him very well. He got hit with a clean right hand and uppercut behind it. Lopez spin him and hit him with another clean right. Chin ain't too bad. Uh, for that baby face, that's one little tough tiger there. That guy is tough. And you just saw the defense of Lopez also excellent. So elusive. He just does it at both ends to put it in basketball parlor. He slips, he moves. And when he misses, he rarely leaves himself out of position to come back with a punch. Is that a description of Rodman you just did? I watch basketball. I just hope Lopez doesn't tie his hair. <laughs> I don't think he needs to do anything but fight like this to be a legend in Mexico. He still idolizes Julio Cesar Chavez, but it's interesting. He told us Oscar de la Hoya came up to him, Lopez, and said, I think you're the best in the world. He really has everything perfect. He boxes well, he punches well, he slips well, his defense, he has all the subtle nuances down pat. And if you had to compare him to a baseball player, compare him with Joe DiMaggio. He does everything and he's modest and quiet after the, after the game. He's Just like second. Gentleman Joe. Heading for the bell. Remata como estabas trabajando con Plachi, un gancho. 
Acabas de meter un gancho al hígado que se enconchó todo gancho al hígado, gancho al hígado, precioso el gancho. Insiste con ese gancho. I can't hit him straight with a jab, and Nacho said he's bending over. That's why he can't hit him. So straighten him up with the uppercut and go to the liver. Abusado con el gancho. This is not an easy guy. This is a live guy. Nacho said that. Go after him. Look at the stance as Lopez is poised for round three. Lopez graciously accepts instructions between rounds from Ignacio Ferrestrain, who has trained several world champions, but Lopez, for sure, is his own man. Oftentimes, Ignacio will ask Lopez if he agrees. Well, he is a student of the science. He really is. He studies films. He sees the great champions in I don't think he can get anything from anybody. They can get something from him now. Well, see, the first thing he did, too, he went to the body with the left hook, tried to take the right hand over the top, did Lopez. And right now, Preach is shown to be a pretty durable young man. Not bad for a guy who just came over from Thailand a few days ago, banging tough against one of the best in the world. Lopez, who has fought in the shadow of Julio Cesar Chavez for years in Mexico. And in all due modesty, he now says that people in Mexico, the fans, the media now consider him the best Mexican fighter today. I don't think there's anybody close to him. Look at this kid come on. I mean, he's fighting a, a gutty fight. He's coming on fighting a gutty fight. I like this kid. You know, he keeps kind of a tight defense, gets in like a little turtle shell kind of defense and jumps up out of here, winging and wild, but trying. Boy, he has no fear in his heart, I'll say that. Preacher reportedly 18 and 2 with eight knockouts. And every once in a while, Bobby, he's getting clocked with right hands and uppercuts, and he takes them well. He has not been rattled yet. You, know, you watch Lopez when he moves offensively and defensively. He's always on balance. Look at that. Oh, there he goes. There it is. Combination by Lopez. Always on balance, has the leverage. Oh. That's it. This oh. kid is gone. He is out. Forget about it. Round three, it's over. That's almost a, 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 a parallel of the fight we saw before. Everything is going along nice, and all of a sudden, this guy pulls the trigger. Bang, bang, bang. You see, that's just it. That's what's so wonderful about him. He takes his time. He has patience. He never rushes himself or gets overexcited. He works, he works, he goes back to the corner. He listens, he digests it, he goes out, and does exactly what he needs to do to clean up. And, and the moment that that opportunity comes, he fires, Bobby. It's like a cannon. You just bang, off it goes, and that's it. And this kid was doing very well for himself. So, I mean, for all the uh, oohs and ahs about a, a shaky record and, and just coming over, still, you got to give the little kid credit. Boy, he was not scared. He gave it all he had, and he lost to the best fighter in the world, so I don't think he's got too much to be ashamed of. They have a pretty good accounting of himself, despite the fact that most thought it was going to be a colossal mismatch. And now, Ricardo Lopez with 16 of his 32 knockouts coming in three rounds or less. Ricardo Lopez continues his six-year reign as WBC strawway champ 16th title defense a belt he's worn since 1990 continues to have the longest undefeated streak among champions and an imposing 42 and 0. he's one of the best i've ever seen to use a fighter's momentum coming in timing him and dropping him dead on one shot especially a little man like that with one punch power as we take a look at some of the action We hear you see Lopez always got his hands up, working that right hand, the left uppercut. Look at that left uppercut. The leverage, the bounce we were just talking about. He delivered that left uppercut right down the pipe, set up with the right, with the right hand first. Here you see another look. His hands always up once again. He throws a one two, steps under, bang. Right in between. I mean, he split those gloves perfectly. And I guarantee you, Preacher never saw it coming. He may need a preacher. The question remains now. Where does Lopez go in terms of career challenges and self-gratification and the recognition that he so richly deserves? That all remains to be seen. Let's get the official time from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 46 seconds in round number three. Our referee in charge, Dr. James Jenkins, stops the contest. He's the winner by way of knockout and still undefeated, still the WBC strawweight champion 